Welcome to The Late Show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Well, we are fast approaching the end of the epic saga that is the confirmation of Supreme Court nominee and he who dealt it... <laughs> Brett Kavanaugh. <laughs> the last week has been an emotional roller coaster. There were lots of twists and turns, and I feel like throwing up. <laughs> the Senate's going to vote Saturday? Saturday. I don't know what's going to happen, but I got a strong hint that he would be confirmed when I saw this. I will nominate Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the United States Supreme Court. It's subtle. You might miss it, but... <laughs> he was nominated by a Republican president with a Republican Senate. It's a pretty good hint. <laughs> now, when that announcement was made, the best estimate on the vote was 51 for, 49 against. But with all the dramatic revelations, accusations, denials, heart-wrenching personal testimony, people's reputations and lives in tatters, those numbers have shifted, okay? So let's just let's crunch some numbers here, okay? So <laughs> it was 51, it was 51, it was 51, 49, and then who we got? We got Ben Sass. Ben Sass is a maybe. Then we got, uh, let's see. We got Lisa Murkowski. Who else? Lisa Murkowski's a maybe. We got Susan Collins. Jeff Flake is going back and forth. Then again, there's, there's Joe Mention. There's Heidi Heitkamp. And there's, it's just, and, okay, that leaves us with the possibility of. Yeah, it's 51 49. Okay. Now, one thing, I guess, some grip on the fingers. A grip on the fingers. Now, one thing that has changed is the FBI investigation. Before the FBI investigation, both sides were confused and angry. Now both sides are confused and furious. <laughs> Last night, the White House released a statement saying the FBI had completed its report and that it represented an unprecedented look at a nominee. The statement was released at 2.30 a.m. 2.30 a.m. isn't typically a time you release critical materials that exonerate a Supreme Court nominee. It's typically when you release your drunkest tweets. <laughs> Honestly. No, 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 no. Shh, shh, shh. Shh, shh. <laughs> I can't hear the typing. Honestly. <laughs> honestly, I think in a fight, Dumbledore could beat Robocop. <laughs> Hashtag Coney 2012. <laughs> Now, only senators and very limited number of staff in the Senate are allowed to read the FBI report, and only at a sensitive, compartmented information facility, or SCIF, in the Capitol Visitor Center, and just one physical copy of the report will be available. I would say they're treating this report like the nuclear launch codes, but then I remember that they have given the launch codes to an idiot. <laughs> now, there's not a lot of space. It's true. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Now, there's not a lot of space in the secure location. Mm -hmm. So, the two parties will take turns having access to the FBI report in shifts. They're acting like divorced parents. <laughs> hey, damn it, Sharon. You had the report last weekend. We were going to paintball. Come here, report. Come here. <laughs> Democrats say that the report is lacking in a uh, report. <laughs> For one thing, the sexual assaults uh, that Kavanaugh is accused of uh, both allegedly happened while he was hammered. And he said under oath that he was never a big drinker. But the White House admits that the FBI didn't even investigate Kavanaugh's drinking. What? That's like investigating an arson and saying, we're not really looking into the fire part. <laughs> we're more wondering how this building disappeared over here. Well, what, was it wizards? Did they use mirrors? Hall and David Copperfield for questioning. What? He's disappeared. In total... <laughs> now, in total, magic. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
In total, 40 people came forward to say they had information, and the FBI interviewed nine people. Now, a lot of potential witnesses offered to talk to the FBI, but the FBI evidently wasn't interested. Here's Kavanaugh's college roommate. I've never been contacted uh, about Brett by the FBI ever. I was his freshman year roommate, and if you wanted to know how somebody behaved uh, in college, which is, which is a time where, especially that transition from high school to college, where people are likely to have done something that expressed uh, uh, something that might have been a problem, uh, that they would have contacted me. That's everybody's nightmare. <laughs> the FBI interviewing your freshman year roommates. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, officer. Officer. Officer, I, uh, I distinctly remember Stephen used to make ramen noodles in the teapot. <laughs> so all my tea tasted like hot and spicy beef. He, uh, <laughs> he cannot be on the Supreme Court. <laughs> the Republicans seem satisfied. Maine Susan Collins says, it appears to be a very thorough investigation. No, it doesn't, Susan. <laughs> they interviewed nine people over five days. I've had more thorough investigations to find my AirPods. <laughs> I think I swallowed one. Hey. I, I sleep. Oh, this sleep is true. With it in? You sleep with it in? I go to sleep with one in, listening to like a podcast or something like that to try to go to sleep. I woke up this morning, it's gone. <laughs> I think I swallowed it like a, like, a, like a terrier with your keys or something. Oh, yeah. And after they'd read the FBI report in the secure location, AKA Brett Kavanaugh in the Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> Senate... <laughs> Senate Republicans treated the nation to a tongue-lashing by a panel of angry grandpas. <laughs> and Chuck Grassley responded with a sort of righteous indignation that can only come from an old white guy slightly inconvenienced. This started downhill very quickly on about July the 10th. The downhill slope that Schumer's put us on is really dealing with a demolition derby. This is almost rock bottom. Everything but whether he's qualified to serve has been brought up. Listen up. Come on. We looked at it. July 10th, Chuck Schumer, don't start. Downhill demolition derby at long last, sir. Have I no decency? I'll have the early bird special, the orange ruffy and the tapioca. Get off my damn lawn! Get off my... Get off! Get off! Get off my lawn, boy! I'll tell you one thing, I didn't get in my face, I'm right there, man. Yeah. Yeah. it. Tell you what, I'll tell, tell you what's going on there, I'll tell you what's going on there. Are <laughs> well, you kids there? Kids there with your, your reports? Tell you. You kids? <laughs> Keep in mind, he's winning. That's his happy face. <laughs> and Senator Chuckles there had more harsh words for the media who dragged Kavanaugh's name through the mud of his own reputation. Now, I would never use the word fake news. I consider you folks policemen for our de democratic system of government. But I want to show you where some of you have bias. I've had uh, demonstrators in my office uh, for two weeks now, both for Kavanaugh and against Kavanaugh. And uh, one time, the people that were for Kavanaugh wanted to be interviewed. And they said, we only we we're only interested in view interviewing people against Kavanaugh. Now, is that, that's a bias that none of you should be proud of. Okay, if that's true, that's not good. Although, I think it's a little late for Chuck Grassley to call for interviewing all the witnesses. <laughs> and... Oh, no. Nah. Look, it's not good. It's not good, you kids. If you're doing that, and all of you, and I like you guys, I like all of you guys, and I would never say the things that I'm saying right now. I would never say all the things that I'm implying right now, and I'm, I've had it, I've had it. All right. All right. I gotta wear different underwear if I'm gonna do that. It's, uh, yeah, yes. yes. <laughs> Welcome to Moose Knuckle Junction. And what? 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 It means nothing. It means nothing. You know, it means nothing, John. Yeah. And you can get the kids back in the room. And Cornyn, 
John Cornyn, Senator John Cornyn, stepped up and tore the protesters a new Cornyn hole. Now's the time to quit all of these antics, these hijinks. That's quite enough of your antics, your hijinks, your jack and napery, your, your flim faddle, your, your fiddle flam, your, your tomfoolitude, and credible accusations of sexual assault. After the press conference, Senator Hatch was approached by protesters and he gave them a dismissive wave before the elevator doors closed. See you, ladies. Me and the other old men are off to party. I'm going to crack open a bottle of Ensure and shove it up the old booth tube. Mm. Vanilla. Vanilla. Oh, oh. That's a little sweet. Now, we're joking. Obviously, we're joking. Earlier in the day, Cornyn had an interesting literary comparison for the Republicans standing up for Brett Kavanaugh. Some commentators have called this our Atticus Finch moment, recalling the famous novel To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Yes. He's saying that Brett Kavanaugh in the situation is the same as a black man accused of sexually assaulting a white woman in 1930s Mississippi. And it makes sense. I mean, who can forget the dramatic courtroom scene. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> your job here today is to determine the truth. Does boofing mean farting? <laughs> is it? Is it? You must determine it. This is your job, a sacred honor. Is it butt sex? Or, as the prosecution would have you believe, is it butt chugging? We know it has something to do with the butt. In the name of God, do your duty. We've got a great show for you tonight. Lady Gaga is here. But when we return, we introduce a brand new segment. Stick around.